China's carrier, the Fujin, made global headlines with its powerful image, flat deck, electromagnetic catapults, and sleek modern design. But beneath this symbol of progress lies a hidden constraint that could redefine its true capabilities at sea. The carrier's power system may limit how far and how long it can operate. In this video, we'll uncover the truth behind this fatal flaw. Explain how experts discovered it, why it matters for China's naval ambitions, and what this revelation tells us about the future of carrier technology. The Fujin is China's most advanced carrier yet, and visually, it's breathtaking. Its flat deck, triple electromagnetic catapults, and massive air wing mark a major leap from the earlier Liaoning and Shandong carriers. However, the true story lies beneath its deck, specifically, in what drives it forward. Unlike U.S. supercarriers that use nuclear reactors, the Fujin relies on conventional steam turbines and diesel generators. Satellite images and footage from its recent sea trials show large funnels and exhaust plumes, clear signs that it's powered by traditional fuel, not nuclear energy. This single choice defines its operational boundaries. While nuclear carriers can sail for years without refueling, conventional ones must rely on frequent tanker support, reducing how long they can stay at sea and how far they can go. Analysts estimate Fujin's propulsion output to be around 164 megawatts, or roughly 220,000 horsepower. That sounds powerful, but when compared to U.S. nuclear carriers like the Nimitz class, whose total shaft power exceeds 400 megawatts, the difference becomes stark. Fujin's energy generation is impressive for a conventional vessel, yet it falls short of the supercarrier benchmark. This limitation doesn't make the Fujin weak, it makes it transitional. China incorporated advanced systems like an integrated medium voltage direct current power grid to feed its electromagnetic catapults. This is the same kind of system found on next generation vessels. But if the energy feeding those catapults comes from a limited source, it restricts how consistently and intensively they can be used. Power defines more than movement. It governs everything from radar operation to aircraft launch frequency. So while Fujin's deck design represents a quantum leap in engineering, its internal energy core still ties it to the limitations of conventional power. The gap between image and capability starts here, and it's the foundation for the growing discussion about how big that gap really is. The claim that China's Fujin operates at only 60% of the power of older US carriers has spread widely. But is it true? When examined closely, that figure appears more rumor than reality. It's based on estimates, assumptions, and incomplete data rather than verified engineering reports. Here's what we do know. Fujin's total propulsion output is estimated at 164 megawatts, while U.S. Nimitz-class carriers generate more than 400 megawatts in shaft power alone, not counting their massive electrical capacity for onboard systems. That means Fujin produces roughly 40%, not 60%, of the power of a Nimitz-class supercarrier. However, the specific number depends on how power is defined. Some analysts may include only propulsion, while others factor in total energy generation across systems. So, where did the 60% number come from? It likely originated from speculative online discussions that compared unverified megawatt figures, blending mechanical and electrical outputs into one number. The Chinese Navy hasn't published the official specifications, which leaves much of the global community piecing together data from satellite imagery, construction patterns, and engineering analysis. In the absence of transparency, estimates turn into headlines, and headlines into myths. The truth is, whether the figure is 40% or 60%, the significance remains the same. The Fujin is a conventionally powered carrier competing in a world where the leading standard is nuclear. That inherently means less endurance, fewer reserves for high-energy systems, and greater dependence on supply fleets. Experts consistently highlight this energy gap as the key reason China's current carriers are still regionally focused rather than globally deployable. To be clear, this doesn't diminish Fujin's engineering achievements. It's the first Chinese carrier to use electromagnetic catapults, allowing for more efficient aircraft launches than the ski-jump designs of its predecessors. Its integrated electric propulsion system shows China's understanding of where carrier technology is heading. But these achievements operate within an energy ceiling, one that nuclear propulsion would eventually remove. The 60% flaw isn't a number, it's a symbol. 
It represents the technological gap between conventional and nuclear power in sustaining next-generation operations. Fujin's design is advanced, but its power system keeps it tethered to shorter-range missions and higher logistical demands. The myth may be overstated, but the underlying challenge is absolutely real. Why does Fujin's power gap matter so much? Because energy isn't just about speed, it's about strategy. In modern naval operations, power translates directly into reach, endurance, and flexibility. And for a nation seeking to project its influence far beyond its regional waters, that makes all the difference. Let's start with endurance. Nuclear-powered carriers can remain at sea for years, limited only by crew endurance and food supplies. Conventional carriers like Fujin, on the other hand, must refuel frequently. This means every extended voyage depends on a robust chain of support ships. Even though China is expanding its fleet of oilers and logistics vessels, that reliance reduces the carrier's independence and ability to maintain long-term operations in distant oceans. Next is power margin, the available energy to support next-generation systems. Today's carriers are no longer just flight decks. They're floating energy hubs that power sensors, radars, catapults, and potentially, in the future, high-energy weapons or advanced drones. Fujin's integrated electrical system gives it a foundation for such systems, but its total energy ceiling remains smaller. In practice, that limits how many energy-hungry technologies it can operate simultaneously. Then comes sortie generation, how many aircraft the carrier can launch and recover in a given time. This depends heavily on reliable, abundant power for catapults and flight deck systems. If the energy supply is stretched thin, the ship's operational tempo suffers. During its 2024 and 2025 sea trials, Fujin demonstrated consistent progress, completing multiple major tests, including successful electromagnetic launches. But testing is one thing. Sustaining such operations under real conditions is another. Endurance at sea and repeated high-load usage are where energy limitations become apparent. The Fujin's hidden flaw isn't in its deck or its design, it's in the power that drives it. The claim of only 60% of U.S. carrier power may be exaggerated, but the core reality remains. Its conventional energy source restricts endurance, output, and flexibility. Yet, this isn't the end of the story, it's the beginning of a new chapter in career evolution. Fujin proves China can build a modern carrier. The next challenge is sustaining it with the limitless energy that only nuclear power can provide. If you enjoyed this analysis, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of advanced space and defense technology.